So Tony Hawk just came out and announced that he had a femur fracture after a skateboarding accident. In this video today, we're gonna to talk about that. What's up everyone? My name is Dr. Antonio Webb. I'm an orthopedic spine surgeon here in San Antonio, Texas. And even though a large portion of my practice is actually spine surgery, I do take quite a bit of ortho trauma call and I fix hip fractures, femur fractures, ankle fractures, infections where I have to do amputations of people's legs and their feet and their toes. And I do pretty much everything kind of trauma related. Tony Hawk, who is a professional skateboarder, he just announced on Instagram that he had a femur fracture. So this fracture that he had is actually called a femoral shaft fracture. And there are different types of femur fractures. You can fracture the top of the femur where it connects to and forms the hip joint called a femoral neck fracture. You can have a intertrochanteric fracture, which is treated a little bit differently from a femoral neck fracture just because of the blood supply. You can have a femoral shaft fracture, which is right in the middle. The shaft is the, the middle portion of the femur. Or you can have a distal femur fracture that is treated totally separate as well. And that's why we go through all these years of training to know how to treat and manage these fractures. He actually had two fractures. So he had a femoral shaft fracture that we usually treat these with a metal rod that we put on the inside of the bone to stabilize it, essentially to um, serve as a internal splint per se until the bone heals. He also had a femoral neck fracture. You can see in this picture here that he has three screws that are going inside of the bone at the top of the nail. So you see the nail here, you see a little screw going through the nail. That's a locking screw. And then he has three screws above this. Well, those are what we call percutaneous uh, screws or percutaneous pins. These screws are used to essentially stabilize the, the fracture. So the, these femur fractures, these are very high energy fractures. It takes a lot of force and energy to break your femur. It's actually the largest and strongest bone that we have in our body. And I usually see this car accidents, patients that are going 60, 70, 80 miles per hour, they run into a concrete wall or to another car, they break their femur. Or if a patient falls from a 20 or 30 foot roof, they fall and directly hit the ground. Well, patients like that, that's a high energy type fracture. Gunshot wounds as well. I've seen patients come in after getting shot with shotguns or AK-47s and it just blasts right through their femurs and we have to reconstruct that. But these are really high energy type fractures. And he didn't really go into how it happened, but I would figure with him and all the stunts that he does and all the tricks that he does on a skate skateboard, well, um, you know, he was probably pretty high in the ground, came down, directly landed on that femur it's a transverse fracture, so that tells me that there was a bending moment to that fracture uh, because sometimes these fractures can have a rotational component to it and that tells me that there is some type of uh, movement. The patient was moving their leg when this was happening. With him, it was a direct blow because it's a transverse fracture and he also has a what's called ipsilateral femoral neck fracture. A couple different ways you can kind of manage this and I think they took probably one of the most common routes. Three screws across his femoral neck and also a, a nail that goes on the inside of the bone. That, that nail, essentially we can insert it from the top, called an anterograde femoral nail or retrograde. We go through the knee, we insert it through the bone and it goes all the way up to the top. And some of these, these nails can be about this long here. See this picture here, this is a nail that I'm about to put into a patient's hip this fracture here was a little bit different. It's called a subtrochanteric femur fracture. The fracture extended down some into the shaft itself. So for me, these fractures are best treated with a long intermedullary nail. The femur or any other bone that we fix, most fractures take about six to eight weeks to heal. And after we fix these fractures, most of these patients can get up and start walking right away. There's a video of him 
like walking right after surgery, I would assume it's right after surgery, but you can see he's placing weight on his extremity. So that's the reason why we do these surgeries, so patients can get up and start walking again. Uh, you can place full weight bearing for most of these. If it's a stable fracture, you get the, the fracture fragments realigned. You have that internal splint from the, from the nail on the inside of the bone. So that's a pretty stable fracture. It will heal, it will take time to heal. So the big question is, will Tony Hawk come back from this? The question is, probably. I mean, the recovery for this, I mean, we're, we're talking anywhere between three to six months, sometimes a little bit longer. The bone takes about two months to heal. After that, you have to go through a recovery process, get stronger, get back up on your feet, start walking, strengthening those muscles around that area to stabilize it. Most of these fractures do go on the hill. There are very few that actually go into what's called a non-union, or the bone doesn't heal together. In those cases, we have to do other surgeries to take the patient back to surgery uh, to get that bone to heal. So this is Dr. Webb reacting to Tony Hawk's femur fracture. He actually had two fractures, a non-displaced femoral neck fracture, as well as a femoral shaft fracture. And the reason why I know that is because he has three screws above the intermedullary nail. So he most likely broke his femoral neck too. Uh, but hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys learned something. Make sure you like, subscribe, and uh, we'll see you on the next one.